Hello everyone, Luke here from 3D Tutor. In today's tutorial, I will teach you how to set up your very own skybox. So for that, we'll have to start by importing ourselves an HDR file for an image. I got my one from ihdr.com. They have a bunch of HDR skies and they're totally free. So make sure to check them out and support the website. So once you import yourself an HDR file, you'll have to double click on it to open it. And you'll need to make some changes before using it. So first things first, within our details tab, underneath the level of detail section, we'll have to change the MIP gen settings. It is by default set to from texture group. We'll have to change this to no MIP maps. This will make sure that the image itself is going to be sharper and no filtering is enabled. Then afterwards, we're going to be increasing the resolution because right now it is set to 496 and our in-game resolution is set to 2048. So if we want a really nice and crisp image, we're going to have to go underneath the compression. We're going to have to firstly change the maximum texture size. So we're going to set this to a default HDR size. So this one is imported as 496 and that is the one we're going to set to so I'm going to set this one to 496 as well and also we're going to need to make sure that our compression settings is set to HDR this will give us the proper lighting color information that we need for our HDR sky so once everything is done we're going to hit Control and S and save our work now that we have ourselves a texture set up we're going to be creating ourselves a material for it. So for that, we're going to be right-clicking on the content drawer and selecting material. Call this skybox mat. And let's double click on it to go into it. Once we open ourselves a material graph, we're going to be changing some of the properties for this material in order for it to be set up for the skybox. So first things first, let's click on the material node. And on the left side, we're going to be changing it, our material to be two sided. So underneath the material section, we're going to click this box over here. And we're also going to be changing our shading model. We don't want it to be affected by any other light sources. So we need to change this from default lit to unlit. And finally, what we need to do is we need to tell the Unreal Engine that this is going to be a skybox. So within Details tab, we're going to be searching for Sky. And underneath the Advanced tab, there is a section called Is Sky. We need to make sure that this is enabled. Now this will help us later on when we're setting ourselves a skylight to work with the material. So once we're done with these, we're now going to begin by importing ourselves the texture onto the material graph. So the one we had it prepared, we're going to import it and we're going to connect it to emissive color. But right away, what you'll notice is that it says error. And for that, we're going to be fixing it by adding an absolute world position onto the UVs. So let's right click on the graph and search for world position. So underneath the coordinates, world position, we're going to select this one by connecting this to the texture sample going to get ourselves a working texture for the skybox. But we're not done quite yet. Ideally, we'd like to make some customizable settings that we could make some adjustments to within the level itself. First things first, we're going to make sure that the texture is set to parameter. We can do this by right-clicking and converting this to a parameter. Then we're going to call this a texture skybox. So, this will allow us to change our skybox within the material instance later on whenever we wish. We're now going to be making sure that the texture itself is easy to rotate to make sure that the skybox is faced in the right way. So for it, we're going to be creating a rotate about axis. So let's right click on the graph and search for rotate about axis. This one over here. Once we have rotate about axis, we're going to 
tell which axis specifically we're going to be using it. And for that, we're going to hold free on our keyboard and click our left mouse button on the graph to get ourselves free vector. Then we're going to go into the constant properties. And then we're going to tell it that it's only being affected within the Z axis, which happens to be blue. So let's go ahead and change this to a value of one and click OK. Now we're going to attach this to normalize rotation axis. And then we're going to be telling it which exact location it is originating from, from pivot point. So for that, we want it to be from the zero world axis, from the center of our world. So for that, we're going to be simply holding one and clicking on our material graph and attaching this to the pivot point. Now, as for the rotation angle, we're going to be creating a constant for it, so we'd be able to adjust it later on. For that, we're going to be holding S and clicking our left mouse button. And we're going to change this name to a rotation. So, now we could attach this to our default rotation angle. But once we're going to be changing this, it'll be way too sensitive. So for that, we're going to create a divide function. So let's hold the button D on our keyboard and click our mouse button on a graph. Then we're going to connect divide to A. And as for the B, we're going to hold one and click on the graph and connect this to a B. And let's make sure to change this to a value of 100. So this way, our rotation parameter is going to be divided by 100, making it much easier to control. So now let's connect it to our rotation angle, just like that. And finally, as for the position, we're going to be connecting absolute world position to it. So let's connect it to absolute world position, like so. And we're done with the rotation about axis functionality. But we can't connect it exactly straight to the UVs. What we need to do instead is we need to add this to an absolute world position. And so for it, we're going to hold A and click our mouse button on our material graph. And then we're going to simply add a rotate about axis and combine it with absolute world position. Now for both of them, we're just going to connect this to the UVs. And by doing so, we're going to be having control over the position, the rotational position of the skybox. Now, one last thing that I'd like us to do is I'd like us to create an exposure parameter to make sure we can adjust the brightness of the skybox. And so for that, we're going to hold a letter M on our keyboard for a multiply. And we're going to connect this to a multiply. Then we're going to hold S and click on a graph to create a float parameter. We're going to call this exposure. So, and by default, we're going to change this value to one. Just to make sure that by default, it is not affecting our brightness of the skybox. So once we're done with these, we're going to connect this to emissive color. And just like that, we're going to get ourselves a nicely set up skybox. We're going to hit Control and S to save it. And we can go ahead and close this window down. We're going to get ourselves a sky sphere. And for that, all we need to do is get ourselves into the basic shapes and find ourselves a sphere. We're going to hold and drag it into the world. And before doing anything, we're going to make sure that the transformation, the location for it is set to zero, 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 just to make sure that it is the center of the world. We can now apply this material onto our sphere. Now, before applying the material itself, I'm going to instead create a material instance for it, right clicking on it, creating material instance like that. And we're going to be using the instance itself, just like that. Once we apply it onto our sphere that we just created, we're going to get this sort of result. And that is because our sphere is way too small. 
And for that, we're going to be increasing its scale. Let's set this to a value of a, let's say, a hundred, or actually even a thousand will do. Will give us a much better result. So now that we have it set like this, we also wanted to make sure that our sphere is set to movable. And now to get ourselves lighting within our level, we're going to get ourselves a skylight. So, so for it, we're going to click Add to Project. Within the Lights tab, we're going to find ourselves Skylight. Let's go ahead and edit. And right away, we're going to lighten up our scene just like that. Now the Skylight itself, we're going to make sure that this is set to a real-time capture, which will give us the proper lighting that we want. And this is also the reason why we had to tick on is light within our materials tab because otherwise this would give us some errors so if you're getting some errors and this is not the type of result you're getting make sure you go back onto your materials graph and within the materials properties underneath the advanced tab you make sure that the is sky is ticked on so once we have it done once we are done with our skylight we can double click on our material instance to open up the parameters for it, I'm just going to get the properties to the side of our view. And with these, we got some parameters that we can change. So right now, for the rotation, if we were to click and hold and then rotate our mouse, we're going to be able to rotate our environment, which is quite nice. We can also change the exposure. So if we were to increase this, we're going to lighten up our sky by quite a bit. Also, we can dim this down by quite a lot as well, based on the type of scene you're going for. I'm going to leave this as a default one, just to get a type of lighting that the skybox was intended for. And also using this, we can change the type of texture we're using, so we can always replace it by simply dragging another texture map into the skybox like that. So that's it guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out our other content as well. We do online courses, create 3D assets and PBR textures. All the links can be found in the description down below. Thanks for watching.